Hey, what's going on everyone? Mecha here and welcome back to another Fire Emblem character guide. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these. I've done most of the English Fire Emblem games now. And a long time ago I did actually do one of Thracia like I'm doing today now. But I decided it was time for some more depth in that one. The old one only had three categories, basically good, average and meme. And I decided it would be time to use the format that I've been using for the past few guides to shed a little bit of extra light on the Thracia units. Plus, it's just been a little while since I've been having a chance to talk about these units. And uh, yeah, I say we get into it. As a reminder, this is not a tier list. I'm using the tier list maker to visualize it, but that doesn't mean it's a tier list. So characters that are below one another might not actually be worse than others. For example, um, a unit that's good with no investment isn't necessarily better than one that's good with investments. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, similarly, units are not ordered within tier lists, so Leaf is not necessarily the best unit in the game, and Misha certainly is not the worst unit in the game. They're not ordered from left to right based on their viability. Um, that's just the way that they join, <laughs> basically their join order. And uh, while I'm at it, every unit in this game is viable, and on any given playthrough of Thracia, you'll probably end up using every unit at least once. That's just kind of the way the game is set up. Uh, even units that are like up here in great are not necessarily good deploys for every single battle. Uh, there might be battles where they're actually you know, not very good, uh, or sometimes they might be fatigued, then you have to substitute them for someone else, but the game is kind of built around that. Uh, it always gives you enough options to do that, so don't worry about it too much if you haven't played Thracia yet. If you have played Thracia, you're probably just listening to this to see if my opinion lines up with yours, or you just like the sound of my voice, but either way, I'm grateful for your viewership. So uh, let's just walk through these units, and I'll explain uh, roughly how they can be used. Uh, of course, again, every one of these units is viable in some way. And in fact, Thracia is probably one of the most friendly g games for bad units, if you want to call them that. So uh, we'll start out with the great ones and work our way down. Uh, Leaf is the lord of the game. He is available in every single chapter, which is unique across this uh, this roster. So he can't fatigue. He has a bunch of cool stuffs about him. Uh, not his stats. His stats are very bad. Uh, but he's the light brand, personal weapon with 60 uses that has 1 to 2 range, gives him a bunch of luck and uh, lets him hit on resistance when that's applicable at range. And he's just all around pretty solid once he gets going, but his start is pretty rough. So you want to train him early on when the chapters are easy and you can set up kills for him because he has the most trouble getting kills by far out of your starting roster. But it is worth training him because he's available all around and even when he's not that good at combat because his promotion is so late, you know, thanks be for being a lord. He is still um, usable in a support function using something like the King Sword or just a Light Brand to chip with it or support one of the 10 units that he has a support with. So all around, he has a bunch of benefits. And uh, But early on, he can be one of your better combat units, especially starting Chapter 4 or so uh, when you, you know, get a new roster. Let's just put it that way. And that can be a good time for his the investment that you put into him in the first couple chapters to pay off. So definitely use Leaf. I uh, wouldn't leave him at 0 XP uh, like someone like Elliwood or Lin or maybe even Roy. Then we have Finn. I was going to have a category for indoor and outdoor maps because some characters are a lot better indoors than outdoors or vice versa and Finn is one of them because in Thracia indoor maps force mounted units to dismount and that makes Finn a bit worse. Outdoors he is absolutely great, he is a bit over leveled, he is, so he's also overpowered, he has the Brave Lance, his personal weapon that can hit twice or even quadruple enemies and just obliterate them. Also gives a huge lock bonus and it makes capturing so much easier because, you know, capturing cut your stat in half, like all your combat stats. So having the Brave Lance able to just kill something regardless of his speed and stuff is just super nice. Of course, mounts just comes with his own utility, like being able to rescue and drop people around. He's just so good. He is super strong outdoors, but indoors he is forced to use swords instead of lances and that makes him much worse at fighting. He still has his leadership star, so he can still be a good deploy, but he's nowhere near as good. So I usually don't field Finn for indoor maps. I just keep him outdoors for the most part. And uh, with that in mind, he's really good. But like I said, not optimal for every single map. But when you have an outdoor map in the early or mid game, there's no reason to depl not deploy Finn. He's super, super strong. Dagnar is kind of like a Jagan. He is a pre-promote. He's like a level 8 warrior early on. And his stats way outshine the enemies. Like, he obliterates everything. Even though he's kind of slow for his level, he still doubles a lot of things. And he also has the Akast skill, which means that as long as, he has more, as, as, as long as he has more HP and more speed than the enemy at the start of combat, he will just initiate an extra round of combat against them. So that can be really helpful because it basically lets him like quadruple or even like, what's it called? like eight double enemies, I forgot what it's called. 
and uh, that makes him hit pretty hard because he also just has a bunch of strength. Dagger stats are often called endgame viable, and to be fair, you can deploy Dagger throughout the whole game without much of an issue with his stats, but what I find is that his low magic and a cost can actually backfire against him uh, when he's fighting like Siege Tomes or Dark Mages. Uh, then a cost starts to cost him a lot of HP because it, it procs even when Dagger doesn't counter. So something like a Ballista or a Meteor Tome or a Bolting Tome can just double him, and that can be very annoying. That doesn't mean that Dagger is a bad deploy for mid or late game maps, but I don't think he's necessarily optimal for most of them. So I wouldn't say deploy Dactar for every single map. I would say deploy Dactar whenever you feel like he could be helpful. It's like kind of like a Jagan in a way. So, uh, but in the early game maps, he absolutely shines. Uh, you, you get a Brave Axe in Chapter 1 by visiting a house with Halvin. And uh, Dactar is actually the best user of that. It makes him just as reliable at capturing as someone like Finn. And uh, that allows you to get like vulnerabilities and extra iron weapons or even more valuable things. Uh, capturing mages is also very easy with him. So you can do all that just fine. And his bulk is great, his HP is enormous and his defense is pretty decent. So uh, he'll last a pretty long while. Uh, but there are chapters where you might not want him around. And there's Orson. Orson is built like a crit machine. He has three properties that make him crit basically all the time. Uh, the first is his personal weapon, the Puji or the Vogue or the Vogue or whatever it's called, the Bouge. Um, it's like a killer axe that has one to two range, so like a hand axe and a killer axe in one. It's super powerful. Uh, it's very accurate by Thracia standards. Most generic weapons have pretty shaky hit rates, uh, but the Bouji is super accurate. I'm just going to call that axe whatever comes to mind, alright? Uh, it hits just about everything, which is very unique. Uh, then Orson also has a high pursuit critical coefficient. Uh, the units so far that we discussed don't really have that, but in Thracia, whenever you double attack, uh, your second attack actually usually has more crit than your first attack, and how much more depends on what your pursuit critical coefficient is. And uh, for most units, it's like 1 or 2 or whatever, but some units have standout pursuit critical. It can be as high as 5. And for Orson, I believe it's 3. So if Orson has 30% crit on his first attack, that means his second attack will have 90% crit. And uh, yeah, that's as stupid as it sounds. Uh, if that wasn't enough, he also has Wrath. If you're familiar with FE4, you might wonder why that's a big deal, because in that game, being at the half HP to, for Wrath to activate makes it pretty scary. Uh, similar things for Radiant Dawn and uh, Path of Radiance. This game, Wrath is like, if you fight on enemy phase and you counterattack, then you crit. That's as simple as it is. 100% crit on the counterattack. So yeah, that means Orson will generally double crit on enemy phase. Uh, first hit thanks to Wrath, second hit due to his pursuit critical coefficients. So he just kills everything. And uh, with one to range, which is pretty unique for um, you know good combat units like that, he is a killing machine. He's really good. Uh, his stats leave nothing to be desired. He joins very early. Uh, as long as you remember to visit the house that he joins, that he comes from, uh, the bottom right house in chapter one, he is going to be probably your best combat units and nothing is going to stop him. I mean, sure, his magic is low, but I mean, most physical units have that problem, so it's not exactly unique to him. And uh, he's still super strong, so yeah, this guy is super good at combat. Nothing else to say about him, really. Uh, we pretty much always field him. Uh, Fergus is a uh, free knight. He uses swords. He joins you in chapter 4. He is uh, pretty solid all around. Um, he's best in outdoor maps because he, you know, he's a free knight, so that will give him a mount and that adds a bunch of extra utility, uh, like being able to canto and rescue drop and just have better stats in general because mounting and dismounting has a bit of a stat penalty to it, kind of like three houses, um, except mounting is just game is just you're better off, whereas in three houses you lose a bit of speed. So all of that is uh, pretty integral to him, uh, but the maps where he joins is actually indoors, and start, those are some of his best maps as well. So I initially was going to make like an indoor and outdoor category, but I didn't really have enough people to fill both categories, and this way the tier just fits on one screen. Um, aesthetics are important, guys. Aesthetics are important. Um, did I say tier list? I meant category, of course. Um, but the point is, uh, Fergus is good in some indoor maps, and then after that, mostly outdoor maps. So that's why I think he's good all around. Uh, he has a pursuit critical of 5, so he will crit all the freaking time. Uh, he doesn't have access to something like the Booj, but he does have access to the Rapier, which gives 10 crit, so that alone is 50 crit. Then he has a mutual support with uh, Karen that gives him another 10 crit to work with, so he too has like a 100% kill setup, or 100% crit setup, uh, if you want him to have one, and that's very beneficial. And then his stats are just good all around, he has a ton of time to train, uh, especially with some scrolls around, he can turn out quite good. Then we have Asbel, probably the best generic mage in the series, probably because there's so many traits that are not generic at all. Uh, he has a personal weapon as well, a lot of people in this category have a personal weapon, Leaf, uh, Finn, Orson, and now Asbel, and Nana has one, and Dean has one. 
Um, that's part of what makes you so good in Thracia, I guess. So the Graph Caliber is a really powerful Wind Tome that has high critical. I believe it has about 40, and then Asbel has like 3 Pursuit Critical, I think. So uh, whenever he doubles, just a guaranteed crit with that thing, basically. And it just hits very hard. Uh, hitting on Resistance, or in Thracia, Magic, because Magic and Resistance are the same stat in Thracia, is very crucial. Uh, particularly, it makes... Asbel very adept at killing bosses, uh, and I say adept because I make very funny puns, and Asbel has adept. But more importantly, it makes him good against bosses, because bosses are usually on gates and thrones, and those give a massive 10 defense. But they don't give any magic or resistance, so they are much more vulnerable to magic than they are to physical attacks. So Asbel is very good against those, and he'll find you'll find that like either you just chip down bosses very very slowly with some risk associated to it, or you just kill with Asbel. That's kind of how it goes in Thracia. Uh, not saying he's the only one who can kill bosses, um, there's definitely other ways to do it, but Asbel is just by far the most easy way to do it. And hey, if a great unit can do anything other than make your life easier, then like, what's the even the point, right? He's also just good at combat all around. He doesn't start off great, his start is actually kind of poor. Um, his durability is obviously kind of low being a mage, so he's like low HP, low defense. His magic also isn't too great, and his speed is even not that good. Um, speed is one of his better stats overall. Uh, but the problem is his base speed isn't too high, and then all tomes weigh him down, because Thracia has no means of negating tome weight. So what will happen is he joins with like, what, 6 base speed or something, and then like a generic fire tome with his weighing down with like 3 or 4 more or something. So he won't double anything early. Uh, what you can do about that is give him the set scroll, uh, you get it in the same chapter by talking to set with Karen, and when you get that to him, his speed growth just goes up. He already has like 70 at base, or 75, and then Set Scroll just puts it over 100. I think he ends up at 105. So at that point, he's guaranteed to get a point of speed, and very rarely he'll get two, so he'll grow out of this in no time. And he's the best target for XP. He's also a great early promotion candidate because you get a Master Seal early on in uh, in the game, basically. And when you use that on them, you get more proof that Kaga loves Sages because they get like plus five or plus six speed or skill. Um, if you're wondering why I don't know these details, I haven't played Thracia in a while, but I probably will play it again soon just because talking about it makes me want to play it. But uh, he just becomes really good with it. And you don't have to worry about him like missing potential or anything because all Thra Thracia stats cap at 20. So he won't like not cap any stats that you care about. Most particularly, he will definitely cap magic, skill, and speed. And those are important. For his durability, I generally think he's the best candidate for defensive staff boosters. You get two life rings, which are basically Angelic Grobes, and two shield rings, which are basically Draco Shields, very early on. Um, you actually, you only get one Draco Shield early on, but two life rings. And I think at least one of each of those should go to Asbel. Uh, Leaf is also a good candidate for them, but I think Asbel is the best overall. Um, again, you can do whatever you like. This is just advice. So that makes Asbel like fix his weaknesses and then he just becomes a juggernaut. But even without those, he is still like a really good, you know, assassin. A really good way to just kill enemies in one round. Then we have Nana, who is like the ultimate support unit. Um, you might have seen his category called Staves and wondered why Nana is not in that one. The reason is Nana's staff rank isn't too good. This category is really for units that have a high staff rank. Nana has like, I think like or E rank stats, which is not too great, but she has a lot of other ways to support your units, um, including literal supports. Uh, she supports Leaf and I think Homer, and uh, beyond that she has Charm, which will just boost anyone's hit and avoid by, by 10, uh, but then it stacks with Avoid from, for example, her supports, so she makes Finn and Leaf like basically invincible when she's nearby after they've both, you know, leveled up a bit. She also has a really good personal weapon called the Earth Sword, which is a one to range Nosferatu sword that will let her tank, well, not indefinitely. Uh, it's kind of a heavy weapon, and it's not super easy for her to just get one on kills with it. Uh, what I like to do is give her Wrath, which is a very, it's like, it's a really good skill, but not that many units use it as effectively as Nana does. In fact, I'd say she's one of two uh, when it comes to effective Wrath use. And with that in hand, she will always counter on a, you know, on a, no, she will always crit on a counterattack, kind of like Orson. You can imagine that when she's using the Earth Sword uh, with its fairly high might uh, and she's draining HP, it's kind of like having Robin use Nosferatu in Vengeance in Awakening. It's very, very, very strong. And I would definitely recommend it to anyone who's looking to turn Nana into a good combat unit. But if you'd rather give Wrath to someone else, like Lenoan, for example, or Karen, or whoever you like, then uh, I don't blame you. And then you just have a really good support unit still, and she's still worthy of great. Uh, one big note about her healing, um, staffs can miss in Thracia. It's a pretty famous thing, a pretty infamous thing, and Nana is one of the units that's hurt by it the most in the early on because her skill base isn't too great. I believe her staff hit is somewhere between 60 and 70 at base because the formula is like 60 plus your skill times 4. Uh, that means that once she reaches 10, she'll actually have 100 hit with staffs. Like, I don't think you can 99% miss uh, like you can with physical attacks, 
Uh, but just know that there might be a chance that Nana just misses with her heal. And she's pretty annoying when it happens and you don't have a backup plan. So have a backup plan until she reaches 10 skill. That's basically my point here. Also, of course, she's a troubadour. She is mounted. She can rescue drop people. That goes without saying. That's why she's great outdoors, but still a worthy deploy indoors just for supportive qualities. Then we have Parn, who is a thief or thief fighter or rogue, whatever you want to call it. Um, I was close to putting him in auto utility, but the reason I put these units here is because their combat isn't very good. It's just their flying or their thieving generally that gets them in here. Um, Parn has thieving, which is great in Thracia, don't get me wrong, but it is auto utility. Uh, but he also has really good combat. Uh, his HP is kind of low, it's like 24 base or something, like halfway through the game. That's pretty bad. Uh, but offensively, especially, he's very, very noteworthy. Uh, he has a 5 pursuit critical coefficient, so whenever he's attacking with something like the Rapier or the King Sword, he'll probably crit on the second attack and kill whatever he's fighting. Uh, the formula for crits really helps him here because, you know, in GBA, when you do a critical hit, you just do triple damage. You can imagine if you're not doing like, if you're doing like 3 damage, that just means you're doing 9. Uh, in this game, it's a little different. Like the Tellius games or the. It's called the Duke Roll games. Crit is calculated, calculated differently. Uh, you double your attack power whenever you crit. So if Parn has 20 attack and he crits, he effectively has 40 attack, which is much better at piercing low defense enemies. So with that in the way, like with that in mind, he can kill Armor Knights, for example, with a rapier. Which is pretty impressive. Uh, he also just has good growths, and thievery in general in Thrace is very good. There's a lot of locks around it you want to, you know, pick. Uh, lock picks have like 30 uses, so they don't run out very fast. And more importantly, he has the build to steal weapons and tomes, because uh, that's a thing you can do in Thracia. Gives you a lot of options, and makes it very easy to get more equipment for Asbel or your short units. Uh, you can steal some staves as well. He might need some build points for certain staves. I think he needs a point of build to get warp, so he's a pretty good candidate for the body ring you get in chapter 18, so I like giving that to him. But uh, Parn is responsible for stealing a lot of warp uh, stabs on my playthroughs generally when I play, and I think that alone is like, it makes him like good as auto utility, but the combat really pushes him over the top. Like his high critical and his like B rank swords is very good. So yeah, recommend using him to anyone. Uh, if there's a chapter where there's not anything worth stealing or Anything like that, you might want to let you know, let him chill. Maybe you know, reset his fatigue a bit. Then there's Dean. He is a Draco Knight, and those are pretty much always good in a franchise. Uh, Dean is kind of a class on his own when it comes to those, because interestingly enough, this game tries to nerf people by uh, with the indoor mechanics. You know, nerf mounted units by having them go indoors. But Dean isn't hurt by that very much. He is good both outdoors and indoors. Outdoors because he flies around, he kills things. And uh, indoors because he has an A rank in swords as well as an A rank in lances, of course, but he can only use it outdoors. But indoors is like, yeah, you can uh, use any resort you want. A uh, good candidate for a sleep sword to recruit Xavier, and also a really good candidate for other swords like I don't know, Killing Edge or something. Uh, he's also he also has a really good pursuit critical of coefficient. I think it's three, and combined with the Killer Lance, it's basically a guaranteed crit. So. He also has a personal weapon, but I don't think that's even that significant. I can imagine a lot of people miss that one because it's in a house that's pretty tricky to get. In his joining chapter, it's like surrounded by like a ballista or two and the boss, um, all of which will want to kill him. So getting that lance is not easy, but even if you miss it, I still think Dean belongs up here. If you do get it though, it's still pretty good. It's a brave weapon, uh, so very good for capturing. It just has like a bit of hit issues, so I like using kill lance regardless of whether I have the dragon lance or not, but um, if you get both, you have both options. That makes him very good. Finally, rounding out great, we have Galzus. Um, he makes your life miserable in the early game, but uh, late game you do eventually get to use him. And uh, as, ex as you would expect, he's very good. I mean, if you've seen him in combat, you probably know what's what. Uh, five movement stars, he has Luna, he has Astra, he has capped out strength, he has like, what, like 50 to 60 HP, so he's never going to die. He has a support with Merida if you want that too. And um, yeah, he just obliterates anything he touches. Uh, there's an argument for not deploying him in 24x because that chapter is more reliant on magic and staves than raw combat. Uh, but if you're slugging through that one, then you could still deploy him. He's probably going to be better than most units here at combat, especially considering it's indoors, so your mount units aren't even very good. And for the final chapter, he is magnificent. Uh, Galsus is so strong that he can ignore the lop tier effects that's on Raedric. Uh, if you've seen him, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, he has attack power against you, kind of like Julius does in FE4. So having someone that can just kind of penetrate that with Luna is uh, super nice. Also, his crit is very high. I think he has 5% critical as well. 
Uh, Gels is just stupidly good at fighting, so use him when you have him, as short as that time may be. Uh, but that's the great thing about, you know, um, a character guide rather than a tier list. I don't have to, you know, care about availability as much. This this is just, okay, should I use this character or not in any given chapter? Uh, more than it is, you know, how good is this character over the course of the whole game? And Gels is over the course of the whole game, he doesn't contribute much because he's not around much. But when he's around, he is great. So, next category that we're going to talk about are the staff girls and boys. It's mostly girls, and these are here because staffs are just so important and so powerful in Thracia. This game is built around all these super good staffs. Um, staffs like Warp, Rescue, and uh, even the status staffs have infinite range in these games. And you'll find a lot of enemies that have them, and having access to them as a player means that, you know, the player gets to move first, player phase comes before enemy phase, so... That means that having the ability to just disable those before they get to do anything against you is just so powerful. Staffy is the most basic, uh, the first staff bot that you get, and really an introduction to how powerful they are. She joins with C-rank staffs, plus 4 to weapon XP in her staffs, which means she's 10 away from B-rank staffs. And uh, then when she promotes, you get another uh, extra staff rank, so then she ends up at A. So she'll be the first one to have A-rank staffs, and that's what will get you warp. And warp is just super powerful in this game. Like I said, infinite range, anyone can go anywhere. It allows you to skip maps or just get out of tough situations, just warping someone in or out of somewhere where they need to be is very powerful and uh, very useful to have. But outside of that, you got um, Restore, you have Sleep, Silence, um, Rewarp can be useful at times. Um, there's Berserk Staff can be fun at times as well. And Safi also has Hammer as a personal staff, which has five uses in this game. Uh, I like to use them on warp a lot, but there are other staffs that are good to repair, such as some personal weapons. Uh, if you want to repair the Light Brand, or the Bougie, or the Graph Caliber, or the Earth Sword, Staffy is your girl. And she can do all that, or just restore something else that you're like particularly valuing. I can see hammering the, the Sleep Staff, for example, or Warp Staff, or Tina's Thief Staff. All those are great uses, and because you get five, you're free to experiment with it a bit. So definitely a fun unit to mess around with. Um, it kind of goes for all these, but don't leave an enemy range unless you're ready for it. Uh, staff units, when they don't have a weapon or anything, they just don't counterattack, which means enemies can instantly capture them and take their whole inventory with them. So if your staffy is holding like a bunch of heal staffs or the warp staff, the enemy will just take them. And unless you can thief them off of these enemies or you can capture the enemy back, you're not getting them back, and that's very sad. So if you're leaving Safi in enemy range, prepare to take her inventory off of her first so that you don't lose all those things. You don't have to take the hammer in a way because personal weapons don't get taken by enemies instantly. They just leave them there, and the same goes for scrolls. Uh, any weapon they cannot sell, basically, so that includes like the Brave Sword, for example. Uh, but yeah, um, take like the warp off of her if she's about to get captured. Uh, similarly, her HP and defense are very bad, so she, if she's going to get attacked, she will probably die. Uh, think of like a Ballista, or just like a, a straight bow somewhere. Keep her out of range of those, because like 14 HP, 0 defense at base is not good. And that goes for a lot of these units. Don't put him in enemy range unless you're ready for it. Salem, thankfully, is a bit more bulky. Uh, he joins like halfway through the game, and he has C-rank stabs at base, just plain C-rank stabs, which means it will take a while for him to get to A, but until then he can still be very useful for using something like Magic Up or the Sleep Staff that he comes with. Uh, just on a random enemy or using Torch, and he should be the one doing that. Like, having Safi at that point use those stabs doesn't really do anything for her, because she'll probably have A-rank stabs already, or she'll very easily be able to reach it when you want to. Uh, but Salem will not reach A-rank stabs without those stabs. And the higher rank a staff is, the more weapon XP they give, so the faster they will level up their weapon rank. And uh, that's very good for, like, C-rank stabs and Salem. Uh, while you're using those high-rank stabs, though, prepare for your staff users to get fatigued, because... You know, normal combat, it will give you one fatigue, which is manageable, and usually takes a couple of chapters for units to get fatigued. Staff units, on the other hand, will usually get fatigued within one or two maps of heavy usage, because staffs, especially higher rank ones, gets more fatigue per use. In addition, staff users tend to have less HP, and, uh, you know, being fatigued is pretty annoying, because it means you can't be deployed. Like, once a unit's fatigue exceeds their current HP, or their max HP, actually, you just can't deploy them for a chapter. And then you undeploy them, and they will get rested. If you really want to deploy a staff unit after they've been fatigued, you have to use an S-Drink. Uh, you do get a couple of those in Depter 14 and 14X. Uh, you can buy them in 14X, or you can buy them in 14, or you can um, save a bunch of civilians in 14X to get a bunch of staff S-Drinks. And you do have plenty, but you don't have infinite. Especially if it's your first playthrough, you might have trouble like, getting a bunch. So um, managing fatigue is pretty important for these boys and girls. 
Uh, but yeah, that's Salem. He's a bit more bulky, so he has more HP than most of these staff units, so he'll be able to like last a couple chapters extra, maybe. Uh, but generally, he will get fatigued at some point. Uh, I usually promote him around like chapter 16, chapter 17 to get the A-rank staffs. Usually by then, he's reached B. So promoting him to A is fine there. Uh, he's also the first Dark Mage in the series, believe it or not. The first recruitable Dark Mage, that is. And he can also use Wind and Thunder when you want him to. He's a bit more flexible. Uh, for example, Staff, he can only use Lightning, which is kind of a rare tome to get, honestly. Uh, but Salem is more offensively oriented, so having him see combat is not all that bad. I usually don't have trouble having him reach level 10 for promotion, just using Staffs. So I don't think he's a great target for getting kills, but in a pinch, he can fight. Tina is Safi's sister, and she is a very fun and very interesting unit. Uh, very all over the place, uh, both you know mechanically uh, and with personality and everything. Uh, Tina is like she's like a base level one or something, and she's like E rank staff. So you might wonder why you would ever bother training her up, but she has two very good personal staffs that only she can use: uh, the thief staff and the unlock staff. Unlock staff is not super interesting, it just unlocks a lock on a chest or a door anywhere on the map, infinite range, which is useful, it's, uh, it's useful at times, it mostly just saves you time, or it's easier to get a chest with her than to try and beat a thief to it, for example, in some cases, like trying to get the body ring in chapter 18. That is just nice, it's nice utility. The thief staff is, I would say, probably one of the most broken things in Thracia, if not the most de-broken thing. Because it just takes an enemy, it just takes an enemy's item. As long as Tina's magic exceeds the enemy's magic, she can take their item, any item you want, just any one of them. So you can imagine how powerful this is, right? You can take a boss's weapon and then just instantly kill or capture them. Um, you can take out a sleep staff just like that, and not only do you disable that enemy from using that weapon, but you also get it to use it for yourself. Uh, you can also use it to steal ballistas and then just sell that ballista for money and then use it to buy S drinks in chapter 14. It has so many cool applications. You can use a thief staff to steal, you know, an unlock staff and then use that unlock staff, or you can steal. A th you can use a thief staff to steal warp staff and then use that warp staff to warp someone to the enemy and then just bonk them on the head. It's so much fun and so entertaining to use. Uh, Tina is not without her drawbacks though. As I said, her stats at base are really low, so just like Safi, you got to keep her out of combat, except times 10 because her combat stats are even worse than Safi's at that point. Also, she has very poor hit with these stabs. Uh, like I said, this formula has like 60 base and then 4 points for every point of skill you have. I think that's like 1 base skill, so she'll miss like 1 third of the time at base. It goes up as she levels up, but that takes a bit. Uh, the funny thing is though, it's not always bad for her to miss. Uh, sometimes it's alright if she does because stab misses, they still give XP and they still give weapon XP, but you don't get the effect of the staff. But it also doesn't deplete the durability of the staff, so you still get XP as if you use the Thief Staff and it misses. It can be annoying if you really want her to hit on a particular turn because an enemy is like about to escape or about to attack you or something like that. But if you don't care if she misses or hits, it, if she misses or hits, you're actually completely okay with her missing because it gives her a bunch of XP for nothing. She will still get, still get fatigued at the same rate though, so keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, very fun unit to use. I usually end up promoting her at some point. E-rank stabs, it takes a while to get her up there, uh, but once she gets to like C-rank, she can also use like Physic, for example, and then it just kind of accelerates from there. Personal stabs give 10 weapon XP per use, so you can imagine that, for example, if she were to use the Thief Staff like five times, um, let's say she misses a couple times along the way, then you would still have her at D-rank stabs for basically no cost. So that's how fast it can go. Uh, very fun unit to use. Uh, unlock staff is a nice replacement for door keys sometimes. Uh, opens chests. Yo, that's a that's a nice email that I just got. What's it say? Anyway, we were doing staff units. Um, the no one is next. She has similar staff rank to Salem, C rank at base, so that alone is useful. It will take her a while to promote though, because she and Leaf have the only promotions in the game that are event based rather than just using a master seal. And that hurts her a lot because it means she's stuck in her base class, which is sister. Pretty crappy class overall, she has very low durability, and okay base stats, really good growth still, particularly magic, skill, and speed in her are insane. She also has good pursuit critical, I think she has 5, and she's also a good candidate for Wrath because she's capable of using Nosferatu, which is useful for the same reason as, you know, the combo of Nosferatu and, uh, or Wrath and Earth Sword is on Nana. So that combo works well on the known. But again, you gotta watch out for that low HP defense because, you know, it's, I think she's like slightly better than Safi, maybe not, maybe still like 14 or 0 or something. She gets o code by a bunch of enemy types, so stay clear of ballistas and everything like that. Then she'll be fine and she can use things like magic up and restore and just healing people with physic. It's all around very useful, but until she promotes to chapter 21, she won't be like MVP, 
but once she does promote, she'll probably hit 20 magic and be super useful in the late game because having a high rank magic user with A rank staffs is just so, so nice. So keep that in mind. Uh, but for the mid game, just try to get the B staffs, and that's really all you need to do with her for her to be useful. Uh, Sleuth joins with A rank staffs. He doesn't have the best stats, particularly magic is a bit lower than most of these other girls, uh, particularly the two that are like on his uh, on both of his sides. But just joining with A rank staffs at base with no effort whatsoever required to put into it is so good. Like for Salem and especially for Safi and people like that, you gotta put effort into it. Sleuth just joins with A rank staffs, and that's all he gets, and that's all he needs. So if you just need to warp or physic or rewarp or rescue, he's your guy. He has a couple of movement stars as well. And um, other than that, you don't really have to do anything with him to, for him to be useful. He's one of the primary reasons why the A rank route or the A route is so much better than the B route. Because you only get him on the A route and uh, along with Amelda. Uh, whereas on the B route, you get like, well, you get some of these boys. <laughs> you get some of these. So A route is better for beginners mostly. You also get a warp a staff and a rescue staff extra. Uh, compared to the B route, so all around much easier, but the sleuth helps a lot as well. There's not a whole lot of else to say that I haven't said about the other staff units, so let's just move on. The video is long enough already, but uh, A rank staff is pretty good. Sarah is like no one, except she can promote much sooner. She has the same class, you know, sister promotes the sage. Her stats are also bonkers, she has really high magic skill, speed, and uh, very low HP in defense, so very similar stat build. Sarah also has Paragon, so even though she joins at level 7, you can promote her pretty much whenever you want. She's used 4 to 5 3 times and she's promoted, that's it. Uh, also has all the same staff utility. I'm not going to name all those staffs again, uh, but she can use all of them. She can reach 20 magic super easily. Her growths are bonkers. It feels very wasteful to promote a unit with Paragon and such good growth so early, but the thing about Sarah, she grows so fast even after promotion that it doesn't really matter. She will still hit all the caps that she needs to hit, and with a couple of scrolls in her defense, she might even get some HP to even survive some hits. Um, super, super powerful staff unit would use every single time. Available on both routes, by the way. Even though she joins during the route split, very good. Imelda is only available for those who play the A route. She joins after the route split, uh, chapter 19, I want to say. Uh, you recruit her with Sleuth, and she's a paladin. You might wonder why a paladin is up in here with all the staff users, but uh, female paladins can use staffs in this game, just like Ethlyn and FE4 and uh, Nana as well. Uh, they're just they're just like that. They don't get lances. They get uh, staves instead. And Amelda only has C rank staves, and it probably isn't very viable to train her up to B rank or A rank late in the game. I think I've gotten to B before, but that's about it. She probably won't reach A rank for warp or rewarp. Uh, but what makes Amelda unique is that her magic is so high. At base, it's not impressive compared to units here. Uh, but being a paladin with an A rank and swords, she can use the fire sword, which is B rank, and that gives her plus five magic. So potentially, she can actually reach over twenty magic if you want her to. It will take some scrolling because her magic growth at base is not reliable enough to get to 20 reliably uh, but with the fire sword alone she has very good magic and because you need more magic than your targets in order to like put them to sleep or something like that uh, usually putting to sleep is what you do with Imelda um, that is very relevant so she's a high rank semi high rank but high magic staff user nonetheless late in the game and uh, that makes her a very good staff bot, uh, more than a combat unit. Her combat is fine, her durability isn't standout, but it isn't bad either like some of these other units. And she can use Silver Swords at base for example, or the Kingmaker, or Brave Sword, those kind of things. Wait, where's this loud ass truck outside? Maybe just stop recording. <laughs> anyway, uh, finishing off the staff units, we have Sias and Set. I had an original draft where Set wasn't great, and honestly he should be, but that would make it too light, which I don't want. And honestly, the staffs are a pretty integral part of who he is. So, you can only get one of Set and Sias. They're both late game juggernauts, in the staff department at least. Uh, Sias is also, uh, he has more leadership support, whereas Set provides better combat, and I generally think it's a little closer between them than what a lot of people think, but I would still recommend Sed to most new players because his combat is just so brain-dead powerful. For Sed, he is every bit as broken in FE5 as it is in FE4, if not more so because it provides 20 skill instead of 10, but honestly, it's overkill either way. He still has Adept, he still has like, I think it has 30 Might in this game as well, it hits on Res, uh, one to range, almost unhittable guy, uh, still has a bit of leadership, just Sires has two more, so that's like plus more six, plus six hit and a void for everyone else. So that can still be more impactful than Set's extra combat if your units are already so good at combat. But honestly, I think in the final chapter, you can never have enough overkill combat units. Uh, still, both of them have A staves, and on Sires, this is particularly nice. 
because this combat is not as good, so you still get another really high magic sleep user. I think it's base magic is like 18 or something, which is still pretty high. Uh, not as high as Sarah's and Lone's will be probably. Uh, Safi and Salem also, also have a pretty good shot at reaching 20 magic. And the more of those you have for endgame, the better it is. You'll see it when I get there, I don't want to spoil it for people who are actually watching this to uh, be new to Thracia, <laughs> to like figure out who to use. Uh, but yeah, they're both super good. And uh, honestly, I'd recommend all these to everyone. Um, the more of these you use, the more you can trivialize the game. And I enjoy Thracia because, you know, nuking it is so much fun. Uh, then we get to good in no investment. Uh, these are units that I would recommend you use and try out and see how much you like them. And if you feel like they're not contributing anything, then just bench them and, uh, you know, <laughs> you'll be fine either way. Um, Avel is, of course, the best unit for the first four or so chapters. And after that, I don't know, she's still sort of viable. I don't want to spoil exactly how it goes. A lot of people might already know. Uh, but she's definitely much better early on than later on. That's all I'm really going to say. Uh, but early on, high movements, kills everything, once range with fire sword. Really good against bosses because you have no magical alternatives besides the light sword on leaf. And he's much worse at killing bosses than Avel is. So just spare yourself the trouble and murder everything with Avel. Uh, she doubles everything with her capped speed. She has a leadership star. She has a movement star. I believe. Yeah, she does. And uh, yeah, basically, if it wasn't for the fact that she's not on a horse, you could just call her like a paladin because her movement is that high. And uh, definitely use her to make your life easier. Uh, don't forget to train leave a little bit, like don't solo chapters with her, uh, but use her as much as you want to. Uh, Fred and Glade, kind of similar, I think. They're both like mounted units that have good but not great combat. Like for as little as effort as you have to put into them, their stats are quite good, uh, but they probably won't match a unit that you raised from the ground up and promoted, assuming they're like competent. Like uh, Fergus, for example, is a lot more busted. Uh, even Kalion, for example, who is like in this okay tier right here, if you train him up all the way, uh, he might actually outclass Fred. Uh, but the amount of effort you have to put into him compared to how much you have to put into Fred, maybe you put him like this. Uh, but that's just the nature of Thracia. Uh, so Fred, uh, his standout trait is that he has pretty good sword rank. He has A rank in sword, so he can use silver swords, magical swords, all that kind of stuff. Uh, no leadership star, uh, that's more on Glade. Uh, he's like better at using like a silver lance, for example. He can't use swords at all unless he's indoors, and he has E rank sword, which is pretty trash. Uh, but he's better at using lances, which Fred is not exactly super good at. I don't remember what his lance rank is, uh, but I remember his standout trait is using swords. So for something like the Kingmaker or the Armor Slayer or something like that, you want to go to Fred. And for Spamming Silver Lances and Leadership Star, you want to go to Glade. Uh, that's kind of how similar they are. Uh, Glade also has a talk with Selfina uh, in his joining chapter where he gives her the Brave Bow. Pretty important not to miss that. Uh, meanwhile, Fred is responsible for recruiting and saving Olwen in his joining chapter. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward units. They usually get a pretty bad rep from people because their stats aren't super great for like pre-promoted Paladin slash Duke Knight standards, but I find it pretty useful for like a couple chapters. Uh, at least I use it in chapter 14 for rescue drops and making a defensive formation. Uh, they're pretty nice for that. Gotta watch out for horse layers though. Uh, Ralph is actually a really strong combat unit. I have contemplated putting him up here, but I don't think he's that good, but he is really good. He has really good ranks in both swords and axes, which is great because he's a hero. What else is, are he, is he supposed to do, right? Uh, he's in chapter 15. Uh, the funny thing about Ralph is he showcases how weird axe rank in this game is. I believe his base axe rank is actually C, uh, but he's really close to hitting B rank axes. I think it's like 10 weapon swipes away, and B rank isn't as high as it gets, but there are no A rank axes. The highest is B, there's no S rank either, so once he hits B, he can use everything he needs to. The most important thing for him to hit axe rank wise is the ability to use the master axe. Once he does that, he quadruples everything at once range and kills them. You don't have infinite master axes, but you get like one or two, depending on what exactly you do and how many you capture. Uh, I think Xavier comes with one, for example. Uh, that one he uses pretty well. And uh, for that, with that, he'll be able to one round everything you need him to. You can also use like Hammer, Armor Slayer, Kingmaker, stuff like that. Uh, pretty good Sleep Sword user as well in the Xavier chapter. All that kind of utility he can do. And I would recommend him for. So just because he's a pre promote doesn't mean he's bad. Like I generally would recommend using Ralph over someone like Halvan, even though it used to be common like perception that Halvan was better. But I honestly think Ralph is going to be better for most players, um, unless you like, you know, raised Halvan from the ground up and give him a bunch of scrolls for a while. Uh, but generally, I think compared to how much effort it takes, I'd rather use Ralph uh, as a hero. That's not Orson. Like Orson becomes a hero too, but he's just a class of his own. So no point in comparing to him. Uh, don't expect miracles, and Ralph will be quite good. Ilios, or Irios as he used to be known, or Cheerios if you want to be funny. 
is a Mage Knight's pre-promoted one, only available in the A routes, where you also get Sleuth and Imelda. And he's pretty good. He's got a lot of bulk for a mage character. He's got like 40 HP or something. He has soul, and he has a pretty good inventory that he joins with. So even if you don't want to use him, you want to recruit him with Karen. He has like Bolting and Thoron and I believe a Master Sword. All those are pretty good. It can be a bit tricky to recruit um, because you got to talk to him with Karen. But uh, he will probably roast her if she's untrained because Bolting is so wide range. Like I don't remember many other enemies that have like that much movement because he's mounted and then also Bolting. It's pretty annoying to deal with. But if you can get him, he's actually quite good. Uh, he doubles most things. Uh, he has a good sword rank and he's pretty good both strength and magic. He doesn't kill like the most tough enemies, but he can handle generics quite well. And again, you have no effort at all that you need to put into him. So there's no reason not to use him at all when you recruit him. Uh, the only reason to keep him alive, or like not keep him alive, I guess, is because you have to kill Olwen if you recruited her, if you want to get Ilios, because you can only recruit Ilios if Olwen is not alive. Um, getting her captured will not work. You actually have to kill her off or not recruit her. So that's the only drawback. Uh, I think when Ilios comes around, he's going to be much better than a untrained Olwen and still better than a trained Olwen most of the time. Uh, there are reasons to use Olwen mostly with her personal weapon. Uh, but generally, Ilios' bulk is going to be much better. So that's why I put him above Alwyn. Um, they're both interesting units. Mage Knight is just a really fun class to toy with. I don't know why they didn't want to give you two. Uh, they have no relationship whatsoever. Uh, but if you're at that point where you're about to recruit Ilios and you haven't used Alwyn at all, I don't see a reason not to just kill her off. Unless you're just, you know, allergic to killing units, which I get. But that is how it is. Uh, Xavier... Yikes, that recruitment is pretty tough, difficult. It's really, really hard. I still need to make a guide on it because it's super interesting and I like it. But oh boy, it's not easy if you don't know how to do it. Uh, if you've done it though, which I'm assuming for this guide, I'm assuming that you recruit all characters no matter how tough it may be. Uh, once you get him, he's... I won't say he's worth the trouble, but he's worth using if you already went through the trouble to begin with. Uh, if you want to have an easier time not recruiting him, I understand. And you should definitely not do so. But if you already did, then uh, he's pretty good. He's a general... He's a very tanky boy. You can use the Brave Bow at base level, which is very nice because you might not be using Selfina, uh, but the bow rank to use the Brave Bow is quite rare. Uh, he's so tanky that a lot of enemies will just not attack him. Enemies in Thracia will commonly just not attack if they don't do any damage to you, even if they could damage you with like a crit or something or have like some kind of side effect. So use that to your advantage. He's very good against most physical enemies. Magical enemies like Dark Mages, you probably don't want to enemy phase them, but he's still reasonably competent at just killing them with a brave weapon. He also has wrath and a cost, so an enemy phase he can still pack quite a punch, even if he's not like doubling normally through his speed, uh, because he's quite slow, he will still kill almost everything he touches. So pretty competent, just creating a wall, pretty good in the final chapter, uh, good when he has like walls to hide behind while using the brave bow, like, kind of acting like a sniper. His leadership star, uh, I like Xavier, he's pretty good. Connemore, I don't think is as good. Uh, the reason is because he joins like when most chapters are becoming indoors, and when you go indoor, he loses his lance rank, which is main advantage over Amelda and other units. And instead, you're just kind of stuck with a sword unit. He also has a cost, just like Xavier. Uh, but I think a cost is like a bit risky late game to use, and when you're relying on just a cost to get things done, uh, you kind of end up in, in a dagger situation where you can usually one round kill enemies. But the Dark Mages, for example, in chapter 24. Just a random example, uh, they might like one round you or come close, and that's a big weakness to have, especially when you're reliant on swords, which generally don't have two range, and when they do, they are magical at two range, so it's not even that great. So I don't think Connemore is that good, and in fact, I'd maybe rather put him in okay. I think I'm gonna do that actually. Um, sorry if you got a misconception out of that, but I don't think Connemore is that good, come to think of it. His stats are still quite nice, specifically his HP and strength, and just bulk in general are nice, but magically, it's kinda eh. Uh, Dermiot, or Dermot, I think is quite a bit better. Uh, he's got less bulk from what I remember, but he has more charm. Uh, specifically, he has charm. Uh, this is not three houses. Charm is not a stat. Uh, charm is just nice, just like with Nana. And he can use the Bio Sword, or the... I think it's called the Bio Sword? Yeah, the Bio Sword, but also the Bracky Sword, which if your leaf is untrained, or just RNZ screwed, or you just don't want to use him for some reason, he can use it, and he can fight Raedric with it, which is some pretty nice, okay, non-investment utility. And uh, that makes him sort of useful, but not super great. Uh, again, compared to like how much investment you have to put into him, uh, compared to what you get out of it, it's pretty good. Uh, but compared to your trained units, like if you trained up Fergus, he'll probably be better than Derma by a while. Uh, that base sword of his, that Vantage Wrath sword, it's pretty weird. Uh, I think Vantage Wrath just don't work together at all in FE5. Uh, they kind of cancel each other out. So um, 
there's no point in doing it. I think he still has Vantage, obviously. Uh, but Wrath just gets cancelled out. So... Okay, phone. Yeah, that's not his main advantage, but it is something he can use. Uh, it's a pretty powerful sword to have, and only he and Fergus can use it. Then we get to good investment, where I put a couple units that... I think are the closest thing to what this game has to growth units that I would recommend raising that are worth the trouble. I think with this whole cast here, with a bunch of units that are just good at base or good with no feeding at all, you don't really, I want to say need, but like the, like, the incentives to train these are not very big, uh, but I still think they're cut better than what we have in OK right here. Uh, so for that reason, I think it's fine to have them as like a recommendation. Uh, the Mermidon, Shiva, and Marita both have insane Pursuit Critical. Uh, they can use a bunch of really good swords, including Marita's personal weapon, the uh, Marita Sword, uh, what used to be a Darkness Sword. It's a brave weapon that gives Nihil and a bunch of crit. And so despite the fact that Marita has like three base strength, she still just one rounds almost everything she faces. And Shiva, comparatively, he doesn't have a personal sword, but he joins a lot earlier. And because of that, he has more time to train. He also has soul, so he'll keep himself alive a bit more reliably. I don't like relying on soul to stay alive, but when you add it to like high dodge chances and just double attacking all the time, it still gives you like better survivability. Whereas Marita is more offensively oriented, she has Luna instead, and she also has a shot at getting Astra if you talk to Shanam in chapter 15. That conversation can be a bit tricky to get because Shanam like appears and then runs away after like two or three turns, so you're not guaranteed to get it. Um, Especially if you don't know in advance what to do about it. But if you do get it, and she has that extra skill to work with. Uh, okay, boss killer. Uh, I generally prefer Asbel because Marita has to deal with enemy defense when killing bosses. But she can do it. Uh, they're just the fun Myrmidons of this game. They're kind of like, if you enjoyed using Larce or Ira or Ulster in FE4, then these are the units for you. Uh, they'll really spice up like your army and get a bunch of overkill crits on everything. And that's just, that's half the fun of playing Fire Emblem, right? Uh, but I don't think they're as good as the units I have up here. Partially because they're unmounted, so they're not particularly good outdoors. And then indoors, they rely on like Fire Sword to have one to range, which is a pretty treasured weapon. And usually the indoor maps are not that combat heavy to begin with. And the units you do have generally get the job done and um, whereas these are like investment units that you got to train and put exp into and scrolls so not heavily recommended but you know they're in good for a reason homer is kind of like all this but he's a mage instead and he has paragon joins like halfway through the game so i wouldn't say an s like units but it's kind of like that uh still hitting on res is good the sage class that he promotes into is super good uh, he starts as a bar like 11 in f4 so um kind of like a mage but he uses like life magic as well as all the other elemental magics I uh, can't use Wind Unpromoted, I believe. He needs to like, promote before he has the rank to use it. It's kind of silly. Uh, but he can still use Fire and Thunder, and those are honestly pretty good. Uh, five Pursuit Critical as well, which is insane. Let's him, like Once he doubles, like once he gets past that threshold where the tomes no longer weigh him down to the point where he doesn't double, then he'll be pretty good at critting things. Uh, I think he has a support from Nana that will help him quite a bit as well. Uh, but he is not leveled. His bulk does start out quite bad. Uh, but the circumstances under which he joined does allow him to train him quite a bit in 14 and 14x. Maybe even 15 if you want to. Especially if you're playing Paragon mode, he'll gain XP like, insa like insanely quickly. And even if you're not playing Paragon mode, he'll still get XP quite quickly. So um, these are the units that I would recommend training the most out of the units that we have left, basically. Uh, the rest of these are units that I recommend using when you get them as temporary, or they're just such growth units that I'm not entirely sure if I should recommend using them at all. Um, so Halvin, he's like the earliest unit that I have on here, uh, besides like Tanya, and well, he still joins earlier than those. Um, I don't think he's that particularly great. Um, he has 4 Pursuit Critical, which is his main draw, but the problem with him is he can't use the Vooj, <laughs> the Boge, <laughs> like Orson can, so the only way for him to get extra crit uh, out of that is like the battle axe, which you get later, and it's a bit heavy and inaccurate and annoying to use. Or the killer axe, which you don't get many of. You get like one capturable boss later that has a killer axe, and that's about it. So unlike with Fergus, for example, or Asbel, or even Homer, uh, getting a way for Halfen to just crit every round is not that easy. So he's just relying on his stats most of the time to get two KOs, which can sometimes work, sometimes doesn't. Against like most generics, it will work. Uh, but if you're trying to kill someone on terrain, or trying to kill bosses, or just tougher enemies in general, you'll have a bit more trouble. Uh, nonetheless, if you're just using him throughout the game, you keep training him, and you keep using him, um, he can still work. He'll still get like all stats maxed out because it's just 20. Um, so, uh, again, even the high effort units in this game are pretty easy to raise if you just patient. Uh, but this is one that you gotta put a bit more effort into compared to these. Or with slightly less results. Depends on like how much babying and how much returns. Uh, both of these I think are not in favor of Halvan 
Uh, but he's in okay. He's not in terribly unusable. Uh, Machua is kind of like that too. Uh, she has like 3 Pursuit Critical, I believe. Uh, not as much as the Merms and no fancy skills to show for it. She has Vantage, but that's not super useful. Uh, I use her in Manster like a lot because she doubles everything. And you don't have many better options anyway. So it's nice to use her in between like Chapter 4 and Chapter 7 or so. After that, you usually have most of the good combat units you need. And she doesn't really stand out in any way or form. But she's nice to have while you do have her. And Vantage comes in handy sometimes. And after promotion, she can use axes. Not any strong ones. I think her rank is just too low to use like a killer axe, unfortunately. So again, not a lot of great crit setups that will work for like Fergus. Uh, it takes a while before she can even use the rape here. Uh, when she gets there, she will probably be able to crit semi-reliably. And there will probably be a point where she can crit actually reliably. But Fergus gets there much earlier. So I think he's the better candidate for those kind of setups. When she do have spare rape here, and you do get her to sword rank, she could probably work like him. Uh, but kind of like an inferior version, honestly. Brighton, uh, he has Wrath, just like Orson. That doesn't automatically make him good, but it does automatically give him like a bunch of offense and Manster. The thing I have with Brighton that makes him work not as well is if he misses his Wrath hit, then he's usually not killing anything. His doubling is kind of shaky because his speed is kind of low. Uh, he's an Axe Knight, so that means that outdoors he uses axes, but indoors he uses swords. And when he's not killing things with Wrath, especially on player phase, he needs like the Brave Axe to kill something, which is not great because I mean, look at all the axe users in this game, like Dasin, uh, or Dashin, Dalshin, whatever, uh, Marty, uh, Dagdar, uh, Halvan, even Orson sometimes, but usually not. All these units kind of want to use the Brave Axe, and you don't really have more than one, unless you trade it around, then you kind of have multiple, but if you rely on the Brave Axe to have good player phase offense, then your weapon is in pretty high demand, and that's kind of a strike against you. And then using swords, he's just not killing a whole lot of things on player phase at all. So indoors alone is pretty bad for him. And then outdoors, he's like competing for the Brave Axe. Uh, Wrath still sometimes works to his advantage. He can be good like that, but takes a bit more effort. Delson, kind of like Brighton, but more extreme. Uh, like Brighton is like kind of bulky, kind of slow, and kind of bad offense uh, without Brave Axe. Delson is all that, but more so. So a lot more bulky on the physical side. Uh, a lot slower though, so a lot more reliant on the Brave Axe. And also has really heavy, like, he's really heavy, he has a lot of build, so it's hard to pick him up and get him out there somewhere. Because in Thracia, if you have, uh, if you pick, try to pick someone up, and you can, but they have, like, half or more of your con. So let's say someone has uh, 16 con, they pick up Dalson, who, I don't know, might have, like, more than 8 con, uh, which he always does. Like, a base, I think he has, like, 16 at base. Uh, they get slowed down to the point where, they, like, they have their movement, and that can be pretty detrimental. So a lot of people recommend leaving Delson behind. If you make him good though, you can be a tanky general. As long as you manage to dodge the hammers, like literally dodge them or just don't fight them, he'll be fine. Uh, enemies will sometimes not even attack him because he's that bulky. Uh, he can do some work, but in Manster it's always like a gamble whether this guy's going to hit or not. Uh, if you bring the Brave Axe to Manster, that will make his offense a lot better. And in fact, I do recommend doing that, bringing the Brave Axe to Manster. I think it's, uh, it's workable and logical to do that. Then there's uh, Hicks, kind of like Brighton, uh, an Axe Knight, and has the same flaws. He has slightly better stats, I believe. Uh, if you raise Brighton along the way, he might be a bit better. Uh, Wrath, I think, makes Brighton better at combat overall, but Hicks has some advantages. I think his bulk at base is pretty good overall. I remember him being able to survive two Ballista shots in Tempera 10, for example, both of which can be pretty useful situationally. Uh, I remember in my Iron Man, I think I had him hold someone and then he died due to that. Kind of F. Uh, but Hicks is like... Yeah, <laughs> he's not great, but he can work for the same reasons Brighton can and Dalson can. He's, you have a Brave Axe, so you might as well make use of it. You might even want to hammer in it if you want to use him full time. Because his bases, especially his speed, don't really carry him very far, but he can work still. Carillon is more like good investment, but I think the investment he needs is quite a bit more than what the Myrmidons need, so I put him like a, a category lower. Uh, his returns on him are pretty good overall because he's 5 pursuit critical and leaf support, so critting with him can be work. Um, the main problem with him is his weapon levels. He's like D lances and E sword, which is kind of gross. Uh, he'll grow out of it eventually, uh, but not being able to use something like a killing edge is kind of annoying, or even a rapier. Still, if you take your time, you can make him good. Uh, it just takes a lot of effort, um, but the returns are pretty good. His growths are pretty insane. It's just his base stats are kind of whack. Like if you try to like kill like a generic pregnant with him in his, in his joining battle, you know what I mean. Uh, especially with that stupid Steel Lance of his, but you should give him better weapons, like an Iron Sword. Uh, he does have the advantage of being able to use swords both outdoors and indoors, like whether, whether he's mounted or not, uh, being a Cavalier, and it also has the option of using lances. Those are nice things that, for example, the Axe Knights do not have. 
Still, I find that it's quite a bit of work to make him good, but I like him a bit more than I used to. As you can see, I used to put him like high effort, but I think right now he's okay. He's not great, uh, but I think his potential is a bit higher than some of these other units. Selfina is a bow knight. Um, I would say she's the closest thing to a pre-promote you have out of like all these scrubs. Uh, she's like level 8, I believe, and she joins with a knight proof. So the game is kind of like, hey, you should maybe early promote this unit. I recommend just raising her uh, for a bit longer because her base stats are not super great. Uh, she has a cost, which is a great skill to have for bow knights because it basically lets her double or quadruple enemies that she normally wouldn't. It has a drawback though, uh, just like other units, it means that enemies that, you know, she doesn't counter can just double attack her. She can get one rounded by a Ballista or just an enemy attacking her up close. If her HP and attack speed outspeeds theirs, like it's kind of backwards, but basically if her speed and HP are too high, she's at a higher risk of getting one round. And that's very scary. Uh, but if you can work around that, if you're very careful, then a cost will only help you because it does let her just cheese extra attacks in without getting countered, which is most enemy types, they will not counter to range. Um, so that can be pretty good. Uh, when you get the Brave Bow, she can also be pretty good with that. She's the only character at that point probably who has the bow rank to use it. Even your dedicated archers like Tanya and Ronan probably will not have B-ranked bows by the time Sylphina gets the Brave Bow. So make use of it when you can. Uh, but it's pretty scary. Uh, the horse has some utility, of course. The same goes for like all these uh, like knightly types like Carrion and uh, Hicks. Uh, the horse can be nice, but it's kind of a drawback indoors. Uh, they, she does keep bows indoors, though. Let me just make that clear. Uh, she and Robert, the bow knights of this game, they can use bows indoors, uh, which is pretty useful sometimes. You don't really have much two range options indoors. It's like the mages and then the Puji, and then you have like fire sword and kind of bad things like a hand axe on Dagdar. So having those options can be pretty nice at times. Olwen is a mage knight, just like Ilios, but she joins quite a bit earlier, chapter 11x basically. It can be tricky to keep her alive in her joining situation, but when you manage, you are rewarded with a mage knight that's pre-promoted. Pretty good growths and an interesting personal weapon, the Dire Thunder. Great thing about Dire Thunder is it's brave, so it hits twice, and that's great on a magical weapon, because it just lets you nuke things from one to range on player phase before they can even do anything about it. The bad news is it's very heavy and very inaccurate, so on enemy phase, Olwen can get one rounded by some faster enemies or get hit more easily and die. And uh, those are bad things. If Owen dies, you, uh, you have to reset or get Ilios instead, whichever you prefer. So if you're careful about using her, she can be pretty potent. But when you're trying to hit enemies on terrain or enemies that have a lot of leadership behind him, her accuracy can really cause troubles, and that's what usually prevents me from using Alwyn. Also, she has great growths, but because she's pre-promoted at a time where most enemies are still unpromoted, she doesn't gain levels very fast, so that can be very annoying. So yeah, using Alwyn is kind of dangerous at times, but fun at other times. One trick that I used to recommend was giving Alwyn Vantage. I think you can steal that scroll from the uh, boss in the chapter after she joins and that will let her attack with Dire Thunder before enemies attack her. But like I said, Dire Thunder is very inaccurate, so there's still a good chance she misses and still puts herself in danger. So I wouldn't rely on that, but when you use like the King Sword and her Leaf Support to your advantage, it might work out. Then there's Trude. Um, there are people, um, Pala Emblem included, who think that Trude is like on the same level as Shiva and uh, what's her face, Merida. Uh, he's a Myrmidon as well. Uh, the differences between them are Trude is less flashy, he's just more bulky. He has a high boy sword rank to the point where he can use a silver sword at base. He has B, I believe, uh, or even A, actually. That's pretty good, uh, but he doesn't have as much pursuit critical, so if he doesn't have the sufficient strength to two kill an enemy, he will usually not kill them, and that's just not great. Still, he can use the fire sword, which can usually two kill things, and that can work out. I just don't think the rewards on Trude are as great. Uh, his standout trait is having Nihil, and that can negate enemy skills. They're not very common enemy skills, and when they're there, honestly, um, it's not even that great of a niche because Marita has Nihil too when she's using the Marita sword, that also gives Nihil. So I'm kind of not sold on Trude as like a good investment anymore, um, and I think it's not even that exciting either. So uh, just you're probably like if you're playing this game repeatedly, you might use Trude at some point, but I can't honestly say like I'm really enthusiastic about what he does. Uh, it doesn't help that he doesn't, like... Trude is one of those characters that doesn't join in a situation where you can actually use him. Uh, you have to, like, put him to sleep and capture him or talk to him with Parn in a chapter where there's, like, next to no combat. And then the next chapter, if you field him, you might not even see any combat either. Uh, whereas Marita, she joins in the thick of the fight. Uh, Shiva, he, like, you have to talk to him as an enemy, so you're pretty aware of how dangerous he can be. And you also had the chance to fight him before. So both of these, they kind of provide context. It's kind of like the unit feel thing. Uh, Trude doesn't really have that because he, he doesn't really fight in his joining situation. And that 
probably makes the impression that most players have on him a bit worse. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry about the truth, but uh, it also affected me. Um, he's probably, like, he's usable, though. He's not terrible, but nothing spectacular. Connor already went over, so let's get into the high effort boys. Uh, this is what we used to call the meme tier, I guess. These are units that I cannot hardly recommend, but that I still think are usable uh, at combat if you want them to be. They're mostly just growth units that you can raise from the ground up if you want to. Uh, the exception being Shanam, who's just terrible at combat all around. Uh, Tanya and Ronan are early archers. I'm a big fan of Ronan, as I'm sure you know. Um, Tanya, I've also used in my Iron Man playthrough, quite enjoyed it. Uh, the problem with archers is no enemy phase combat, no ability to capture. And uh, they also just have low bases in general, like their strength are pretty bad. Uh, their speeds are usually enough to double though, so they can still work out. And when you get the Brave Bow, and you get them the bow rank to use it, they'll probably one-on kill anyway. Uh, it just takes more effort than for most units. Um, Ronan in particular is just spectacular. Uh, I think I've said it like a thousand times before, but what I enjoy about Ronan is that his... Um, you never know what he's going to do in a turn, right? He can either just completely fail, just miss an enemy like twice and do nothing else, or he can go like a depth, critical hit, movement star, hit him again, get a movement level up and all that stuff. That's that's the joy of Ronan. He's a, he's a gambling machine. Uh, Tanya is a bit more straightforward, uh, kind of like Naomi and Rebecca from the Fire Emblem games, you know, early female speedy archer once she's raised up. Um, her strength is pretty garbo though. Uh, she does provide a support bonus to Dagdar and Orson, which is pretty nice. So that will let him crit ho hit more often, that kind of stuff. Marty is a meme for a reason as well. Marty has horrible zero base skill, horrible zero base speed, and growth to match those. Uh, but he does have a lot of HP, he has a decent strength base of like 10, and he also has a lot of builds. So I usually use him to trade items from units. Um, that have been captured, then I use them to take that unit from them, and uh, they can go about their day as usual as if they didn't capture. So, for example, Finn grabs a soldier, and then Marty's like, alright, I'm gonna take that, you know, short lance you have, give it to Finn, and I'm gonna take the soldier off of you, and I'm gonna drop it, and now Finn is ready to capture something again, or kill something, or rescue someone. So, in a way, he acts like a mini dancer in the early game. That's what I use Marty for, usually. Trading him long-term, it is going to be a bit of a pain, but you do have the tools to make it work. You have the Brave Axe to just kind of get around the speed problem. In conjunction with his high speed, or his high strength, not his high speed, it will probably get the job done. And then, in addition, he has good promo bonuses. He has like 6 skill and speed or something from promoting, so... When he gets there, he'll probably be able to double some generics. His speed growth is still terrible, so you probably want to give him the set scroll if you want to use him long term. Um, generally not worth it, but he can still make the Marty party work. Uh, Kane and Alva... They join with the Scrub Squad along with, uh, they're just the Scrub Squad, they are the Scrub Squad, along with Robert and uh, Selfina. Uh, they are Lance Cavs like Finn, but they have none of the distinctions, like their bases are pretty poor. Uh, good growth though, um, they'll probably get somewhere if you train them. I've done it before in the arena, I think, and it works out, uh, but it just takes a long time. And their weapon levels are like D and E lances, kind of like carry on, so... Not worth the trouble generally, but you can make them good if you want to, and that's all that counts, right? Uh, like they're growth units. They're mid game, early mid game growth units that are way behind the level curve, but that can still be made work if you want them to. Their pursuit criticals are not bad either. I think it's like three and four. Not sure which is which, because they're both pretty equal. Um, but if you want to use them, you can use like the Paragon Sword or uh, the Paragon Scroll and make them work like that. It's a bit of effort, but that's why they're in high effort. Robert's kind of like that, but he's a bow knight instead. Uh, he grows into like a stronger unit than Selfina eventually. Uh, I just think Selfina's base utility is better. Uh, none of these have any skills whatsoever, which is, makes it hard to make them like distinguish themselves from the others. But uh, Robert can still hit people at range. He has a movement star as well, which can be pretty amusing sometimes. And like I said before, uh, bow knights actually keep their bows indoors. Uh, the lance knights will only be able to use swords, uh, but Robert can actually use bows, so you might be able to do something indoors. Um, even in like 11x, there's like cases where that can be useful. But for the most part, Robert is just like these, um, a growth unit that takes some time to get working. But you do have the time to take that. Then Shanam is, uh, I'm pretty sure he, developers made him a meme. He has, he's a sword master that joins like in the route split, in the B route only. And all he has going for him is bargain, which you can use to buy things that you don't need for half price, which, you know, that's pretty great. And then he has the bases that, like, so bad that they can base Homoros, I think, one or one or kills him, uh, who's, like, a unpromoted bard that joined, like, a couple maps before, uh, where Shanam is a promoted Swordmaster, but his bases are super meme tier, like, super terrible bad. Um, if you want bragging rights for making unit work, this is the one you want to go for. If you want to post screenshots 
of having like made a character like good beyond belief, even though they started out terrible, this is what you want. This is the guy you want. His growths are also like 10% all around or something. It's absolutely garbage. Um, great meme unit. Great meme unit. Wouldn't recommend to anyone. The Miranda is basically the closest thing this game has to Nino. She's a mage that also joins in the B route along with Shanam. I don't know why I put all the bad characters on, on B route, but there we go. The most standout thing about Miranda is that she has Wrath. So if the enemy attacks her and she doesn't die somehow due to her terrible defenses, then she will crit if she hits them. Uh, she probably will. Her accuracy is not like stand out bad or anything, but it's just another thing that has to go right. Uh, but generally her pro bulk makes her hard to use. Again, if you put effort in, just like with Nino, you can make her work, but it is definitely a high effort unit. Then we have other utility. These are units that I would normally put in high effort if it wasn't for their separate utility because their stats are not great. Uh, you might be surprised to see Karen in here. I'm a big fan of flyers, don't get me wrong, but Karen's combat leaves quite a bit to be desired. I'd say it's roughly on par with Machua's uh, for the most part. Uh, Karen doesn't even have the base rank to use javelins at base, which is pretty funny to me. Not that javelins are good on her, but just to you know give you an idea, because they put a javelin in the chest in the chapter where she joins. Uh, but you can use her to like kill mages with her at least in, in Manster, because her res is quite good, or her magic is, I guess you should say. Uh, but other than flying utility, I don't really find Karen very useful for combat. I've made her good at combat before using like the Paragon Scroll and um, a bunch of other scrolls to make her growth good and stuff. But it never really pans out. The times you need a flyer that actually does combat are rare, and when, when they are existent, you have D. And you usually don't need multiple. So I don't find the returns in training Karen very good. But at the same time, flying around and risky dropping units all over the place uh, without having to care about terrain is just super useful. And it takes a while before you get another flyer. Uh, the first one you get Ardeen and Edda in chapter 14. So for the first seven chapters after Manster or so, you have one flyer. So and if you have an outdoor map, I think Karen is worth fielding and worth using to rescue drop people around with. Then Lifus is a thief, the first one you get. I already went over how good thieving is. Uh, Lifus is able to steal light swords like rapiers, iron swords, as well as light tomes. Like, um, I don't mean the literal light tome, but I mean like wind and fire and stuff like that. Um, all pretty good. Uh, there are two stealable wind tomes, for example, that you can get in chapter 11, which, oh, chapter 11x, which is quite nice for Asbel. If you don't get those, you want to buy wind tomes in chapter 12 in the shop up north. I forgot to mention that for Asbel, so I might as well mention it now. So if you can get those with Lifus or with Capturing, that's pretty useful. Uh, other than that, Lifus' lockpicking utility is very nice. Uh, you don't deploy him every map just like Parn, uh, but when you you know when you know see something you want to steal or some chests you want to open or some doors, he is there for you. Uh, enemies love targeting Lifus. Like, I think it's just low luck and him being a thief that makes him so like likable by enemies. Also just low HP and defense in general. Not that he gets one at KO'd, but the luck kind of makes it feel like he does sometimes, because enemies love going for him. He makes great capture bait as well. This is something I do a lot with Lara as well, and sometimes Safi, is, um, you know, take away someone's items, like all of them, including, especially their weapons, and then just get them, like, put them in enemy range, enemies will just go for capturing instead of fighting, and uh, that way the enemy will, you know, lose their turn, doing effectively nothing, because you already accounted for Lifus getting captured, and their, their stats will be weakened, because they'll be cut in half, because they'll be holding Lifus, and you just kill the enemy, and you get Lifus back, and you have an easier fight for it. Really great, and it works like a charm, and Lifus is great for it. Uh, but yeah, lockpicking in Master, and just in general, is super, super great, and um, in like a normal tier list, you usually have Lifus near the top for it, but I put him in auto utility to make it clear, his combat is not good, his strength is Garbo, his bulk is Garbo, his speed is obviously good, because Thief. But other than that, I wouldn't really want to fight with him. Uh, but he can basically effectively one run kill mages by taking away their tomes. Like, mages and Manster only have one tome, like a fire and a thunder usually, like one of those two. You just take them away, and then they can't fight anymore. And Lifus is safe as well. Uh, Laura is a thief. She's the lightest one. She doesn't have to build to steal anything besides maybe like a slim sword. Uh, but she could take like vulnerabilities or a scroll off of, off of someone, like a, yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, she can still pick locks. And then halfway through the game, you have the option to make her a dancer if you have her talk to Parn in his joining chapter. And uh, that way you have like a combination of a thief and a dancer. Obviously that utility is great. Dancers are super useful. She does fatigue whenever she dances, so don't just spam dance. I mean, you know, she really want to raise her up for some reason. But her stats are just not worth it. Absolutely not worth it. Her stats are garbo tier. Like, absolute complete garbage. Probably worse stats in the game. Uh, like, 14 HP and 0 defense. Kind of like that, that wombo combo we've seen before, I think. And then also just like one or two strength or something. Like, absolutely bad. Uh, but as a dancer, it doesn't matter. Dancing is good, lockpicking is good. So Laura is still super great. 
Edda, uh, similarly to Karen, has fly utility, uh, but not great combat. Um, closer to being good at combat than Karen is at base at the very least, although she's more on the leveled. Uh, but her strength, I think, shapes up to be a bit better. And she also has better pursuit critical. Um, Karen is kind of reliant on like Fergus support to have anything resembling combat at all. Uh, Edda can be trained and can be made good. It's just by the time she gets good, uh, most of the outdoor maps are like kind of gone. Like the first four or so maps after she joins are all pretty good maps for her, just for flying around. Um, but then after that, it's mostly indoor chapters where she doesn't really want to be seen because <laughs> the short rank isn't particularly good or anything. So just use her to help rescue dropping people and relieve Dean of you know people to rescue so that Dean can fight instead. That's what I usually use Edda for and also Karen at that point. That's what I think she's good for. And then we have Misha who is... Um, well, Misha kind of joins after flyers are useful <laughs> for the most part, uh, but there are like one or two maps after she joins where flying can potentially be okay. So I don't hate Misha that much, um, but I have half a mind to put her like here instead. That's just how much I don't like her too much. But she's okay, but not as much utility as these other units. So um, if you never find yourself in a spot where you want to deploy Misha, then don't be alarmed. That's just how it is. She does have the ability to use the Wind Sword. Uh, that she joins with, which is kind of nice sometimes indoors. Like, her magic is not all that bad. She actually has some reasonable combat, so you could put her in okay. Uh, maybe even good, no investment if you're feeling generous. Uh, I just want to make it clear, I think flying is what she's mostly useful for. In a couple of times that it arises, but that's not often. So, um, that's my uh, disjointed take on the Thracia units. I'm sure you haven't heard it in a while, even though I've probably talked about all these units at some point. But it was fun to go over them again and give a proper recommendation guide, updating my guide a little bit. Let me know if you want to see any more. Uh, at this point, I think I've done FE4 through FE... I want to say 11. I don't think I did 12 yet. So that might be the one that goes next. Um, but yeah, it was fun to do. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace around. Goodbye.